Well, hello, everybody. What's going on? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? All beautiful people out there. This your girl, Tiffany, coming through here live in the back. So, we got a topic to talk about in a situation that's going on right now. So, as some of you may heard, and some of you may not hear. Some of y'all probably done watched the news or found the article online. This is by Brother Gazi Kozo. All right. So he's the founder of Black Hammer Organization. As you may know that he uh, got arrested in Fayetteville, Georgia for a situation that was regarding to kidnapping, sodomy, and possibly a murder. All right. So I just want to say peace to everybody in the chat. Shout out to everybody in the chat. So, uh, yeah, he got arrested for, um, they say he was involved in kidnapping, sodomy. And for those of you that don't know what sodomy is, uh basically penetrating someone okay and they saying they they found a dead body in his house now if i'm not mistaken i have the article here but it's supposed to be allegedly one of the members that he called his son so the young man was found dead and someone in the house called the police. And so the FBI and everybody came in and investigated. And um, he got arrested and another member got arrested. Now, there has been a lot of talk regarding to Ghazi organization. People who were former members was basically saying that he was running like a cult. Now, if you guys don't know about the Black Hammer organization, let me break it down to you. So the Black Hammer organization is supposed to be like a pan-African movement. They supposed to be sent around a revolutionary ideal, a socialism, communism type of thing. All right, so his uh, political views is more like left wing type. You know, say so it's very left wing, but it's very radical. Now he brought about a lot of good talking points. He really did, and he talked about things that was pretty relevant. But just like any other organization out there, you still have to be careful of. I mean, although they can tell the truth or they can talk about things that's really relevant, the question is, what is the true intention? And this is something that people have to learn from before they even just attempt to give it a chance. Not just pertain to spiritual organization, but also just revolutionary or social organization, period. Because you don't know what their intentions are. So now I have the article online and I'm going to go over the article. So it's in multiple websites. You guys can Google it up. This one is dailydot.com. Now it says, ex-Black Hammer members detail guys that cause an abusive cult, which culminated in arrests for kidnapping and sexual assault. And it says here, uh, Black Hammer's Ghazi Kozo was arrested on kidnapping charges. Former members say it happened to them. On Tuesday, July 20th, police responded to a possible hostage situation in Fayetteville, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta, according to reports. Someone called 911 to say they'd been kidnapped. And at least 10 people willingly exited the home, but one remained inside. Police later found the man dead from a gunshot wound to the head. Augustus C. Roman and another individual now face multiple charges over the incident. Neither has been charged in the person's death, which has been ruled a suicide. Roman, who faces seven charges, including aggravated sodomy, conspiracy to commit a felony, false imprisonment, kidnapping, aggravated assault, and criminal street gang activity. 
is better known as Ghazi Kozo. The address in question is a home to Black Hammer, the organization Ghazi runs that ostensibly fights for the rights of the oppressed. Those that knew Ghazi accused them of operating like a cult. So over the past year, former members spoke out against Kozo, released a Google Drive file with testimonial that alleged abuse, manipulation, and other frightening behavior. Their online effort has tried to keep people away from Black Hammer, highlighting the experiences they've had that left them shaken to their core. So, I mean, when I read this, to be honest with you, I just, I thought to myself, I said, well, he is very egotistical and he's very, uh, he's full of charisma, full of charisma and very egotistical. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ghazi is openly, he's an openly homosexual, all right? So he's openly gay, all right? So um, just somebody like him who has this high spirit energy, you would never think that he would be accused of the things that he's um, accused of, such as sodomy and conspiracy to commit a felony and criminal street gang activity. You wouldn't think of it that way. You, If you look at guys, you wouldn't think guys would do such a thing like that, right? But then again, you never know a person. You never know their background. Now, there's some old videos of him. Before he got into his revolutionary stuff, he was into like some type of technology type of thing. He was into like dealing with uh, computers, cell phones, and stuff like that, like the latest technology and stuff. So he had some YouTube page. I can't remember the name. I don't know the name of it. But he was dealing with technology at that time. He wasn't really on his revolutionary stuff like he is now. But, you know, it, it's just really, it's really messed up. This whole thing messed up. This is why people become hesitant to even dedicate their lives to organization. And that's why I say that you don't have to join organization just to get knowledge. Just be dedicated to your community. You don't have to do that. It's a choice. Because when you join an organization, nine times out of ten, it's not what you think it is. It start off being good, then things go left. Things become sour. And then there's a lot of expose taking place. Whether it be the leader or the founder or the members. Now, he's not the only organization that have done a lot of dirty things. There's many out there. And there's going to be many more. But we just got to keep an eye open. We have to keep an open mind. And we have to keep our eyes open, stay focused, pay attention to how people do things, how people operate their personality their character we just gotta pay attention to the type of vibe that an individual is giving so it's like if you know there's a red flag going on in an organization you in it's best for you to hurry up and get up out of there before it's too late Like I said, I've heard situations like this before. I heard people who was former members of this organization that he um, that said some disrespectful things, a lot of disrespectful things, and did some di disrespectful stuff to people, and particularly towards black women. Well, there was a couple of sisters on there that was saying that um, on social media, that was saying that he was disrespectful to them, would call them bitches, cuss at them, talk to them in any kind of way. Yeah. Then someone had something that he was posting up, like some form of nudity, naked picture of men, 
on Instagram, taking off their clothes and showing their private area or whatever on Instagram. And people took offense to that because they're like, okay, that has nothing to do with fighting revolution. That's your own personal thing. Like, why are you putting that on Instagram? How does that represent what the organization is about? And so he was getting offended because people was asking questions as to why he was posting up certain pictures and certain images of men getting naked or, you know, doing sexual things. Which they have a right to, because the question becomes, all right, well, what's you, what is you really up to? What are you trying to do? What is your main goal here? What is your main purpose? Is it to use the organization as a way to bring sexual gratification and profit or to push, push further your agenda? Or what, what is your whole goal here? So people have the right to know where you're trying to get at so they can make their decision. There shouldn't really be a reason why you get mad at folks. Because it's bad enough people use movement just to get um, individuals, especially women, to get involved so they can act on a sexual pleasure. Or be able to act on violence and all these different things. This is what makes it hard for us as black people to really want to work together. Because it's always something like this going on. And you have caused a distrust to where nobody wants to be bothered. They just go back to what they used to be or live their regular life. They feel like they don't waste their time when they could have been doing other things. But let's go on. It says, Black Hand's goal is to repatriate land to colonize people and African ideology. Has been better known for its online stunts. It conducted a campaign on Twitter to brand and Frank a Karen and use social media to live stream it, it, its in-person antics. And the warrant for their arrest obtained by the Daily Dot Fayetteville police say they Kozo ordered individuals to point guns at two people and force them into a padlock garage. It is an accusation that matches testimony from the Google Drive where a former member says Kozo and members of Black Hammer forcibly detained her and often banished, what say, often brandished weapons. Hmm. And it also said Fayetteville police in the warrant say that Kozo annually raped at least one person at gunpoint. Ooh. Kozo annually raped at least one person at gunpoint. While the police were still surrounding the house, but before they were arrested, Kozo, who uses they, them pronouns, went on Facebook Live and expressed their excitement at what was occurring in the live stream. Kozo claimed, there's a lot of media out here. This is just going to build me up at the end of the day. If you think that I am concerned or anything like that, you're out of your mind. At the end of the day, there's still breath in my body and I still run an amazing revolutionary party our community is with us and now all these news channels are going to want to interview us and we are going to get communicated about all the great work that we are doing here so this is great at the end of the day hmm Then it go down and say, instead, the day ended with someone dead. Prior to Tuesday's incident, the group's history includes a long strain of abuse allegation. A recent coalition with the Proud Boys, 
a commute that fell apart in a standoff and accusation of harassment across Atlanta's many college campuses. Behind all of this is the self-styled Commander Kozo. The group and Kozo itself attract members and gain media attention through its extensive and aggressive use of social media. The organization has unbashedly confrontational style using Instagram to directly threaten police officers and call for Supreme Court to abolish integration. Hmm. So it, it it's a whole lot on here. It's a whole lot about this man. So let's just read some of the stuff that people posted on Instagram or Twitter. One said, exposing Black Hammer. Mem Remember Ghazi was an abuser with a God complex through and through? This other picture did not age well either. Black Hammer Cole, 35-year-old Ghazi prey on young adolescent and it needs to end. Then goes down to another Twitter page. Ghazi has been manipulating, threatening, and abusing members for who knows how long. He uses fear, political education, and gaslighting to control dozens of young adults, especially folks fresh out of high school or college. Then it also goes down to say, in the last year, members of the Black Hammer Coat group have harassed me, followed me, gone away into my personal space and shouted obscenities at me. They're on our campus trying to fleece college students for a donation and today things escalated a lot. So this all come from different pages, right? Different tweets. Saying that Ghazi was an abuser. He was a manipulator. He was abusing, sexually abusing boys. Or younger people. He was doing all that. So my thing is. My thing is. For those who knew that Ghazi was abusing people. Why did they not report it then? If he was sexually abusing folks, why was there no reports being made? How could he get away for so long doing things like this? Allegedly. And nobody made the report about it. And I'm talking about those who had left. Were they in fear for their life? Were they worried about that if they said something, something could possibly happen to them and their loved ones? Why did they not report that he was sexually abusing folks if that's what he was doing allegedly? You know what? All of this is crazy. All of this is crazy and it's insane. And this is one of the reasons why I don't trust organizations. Because the moment some allegation comes out about this person being abusive, especially dealing with rape, that's a red flag for me. That's a red flag for me to say, it's time, no. It's time to get the fuck on. So, Ghazi got himself in some shit. And it seemed like he thought he was going to get away with it for a long period of time. But it caught up. And his name became the news outlet. It became it, it, it was brought up on the news. It was brought up on the articles. And now you got various YouTube channels talking about him. Even the white YouTube channels. 
the white contacts, they talking about this man. They talk about him left to right. Mm. But you know, I really feel bad for those who did join and they had to experience all the negativity. I really do. Especially the young ones. Because see, here's the thing. When people start organization, who they look to gravitate is towards the younger audience. They gravitate towards the younger people. Why? Because it's easy to manipulate them. It's easy to influence them. And you know, when you're at that age, when you're in your prime, you're more energetic, you're more aggressive, and you feel like you're just more powerful, and you become naive. So, when someone see how aggressive and powerful you are, it's typically an older person. They'll look at that and they'll use that. They'll use it to their own advantage to where they can bring control. They can use you as a pawn to do their dirty work. So these individuals know how to play a chess move on somebody that's young. Because see, it would be hard to do it to an older person. Or a person that's in their age group. So why go to people in my age group when I know they're going to be stubborn? They're going to be saying their own ways. They ain't going to want to be bothered. So it's easy to gravitate to somebody that's younger because they don't know. And they fresh out of high school, fresh out of college, they stepping stepping foot into the world and actually experiencing the world for themselves. They don't know anything about life. So they entering into adulthood. So it, this is the opportunity to go ahead and snatch these youngsters up. And fill their mind up with poisoning or fill their mind up with a bunch of feel-good rhetoric. Sell a wolf ticket to them. Get donation. Get money. Bring about gaslighting, manipulation control. And just sit back and watch everything unfold. Let them do the dirty work and just sit back and watch. Oh, if they refuse to do something, then they face the consequences. Then they get punished. And to me, this is what it sounds like. It sounds like maybe the, those that was in his organization, they, they pretty much was either fed up with him or they began to have second thoughts and he didn't like it. So he felt like, well, you trying to go against me and I am the authority figure here. I am the founder. I run this. You can't stop nothing. Who do you think you are? I'm going to teach you a lesson. We got to be careful with folks like this. Because see, everybody that calls themselves revolutionary, they're not really revolutionary. They don't always have the intention on bringing about revolution. They just do it to bring aggrandizement, self-gratification. That's what it is. But that's all I have for today. That's all the information. I mean, you guys can look up more. I mean, there's plenty of articles that speaking on Ghazi and the Black Hammer movement. And those organizations that support them, I'm quite sure they sit back wondering what the hell were we thinking? What's really going on? Or they probably went along with whatever he was doing. Because they're going to get their time too. If they was going along with it. But. Again y'all can look it up online. Y'all can find this on daily.com. Y'all can look it up. On the Atlanta local news. Website. Uh, shoot, Y'all can find a lot of stuff on this. Hmm. 
it's only a matter of time because there's more. Oh, trust, believe there's more that's going to get exposed. There is more. Hmm. All right, you guys. So y'all take it easy. Y'all be safe. And then I'll talk to you guys later. And again, peace and power elevation be to all you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like my channel, share my channel, etc. And hit the notification bell whenever I come on. And uh, y'all take it easy. So peace. That's it. Be careful.